So let's take a look at two different ways of understanding what the quantity 16 to the 3 halves power actually is. Um, so we developed the general principle already that says that what a fractional exponent indicates is that we're taking a radical where the index of the radical is the same as the denominator, and then we raise that quantity either before or after the radical uh, to the power given by the numerator. But let's think about how that works. I want to draw what mathematicians call a commutative diagram. What it means is that there are two different roads that we can walk to get to our answer, and even though the answer that we get is the same, regardless of which road that we walk, um, the path that we walk along that road might be different. So there are two operations that we have to do in computing 16 to the 3 halves power. One operation is that we're going to have to raise our quantity to the power that's given by the numerator, the eighth power. The other operation we're going to have to do is to extract a root, and the index of that root is given by the denominator of my fractional exponent. So those are the two things that we need to do. And we convinced ourselves when we first developed this property that it didn't matter which order we did those two steps, because each of them is just raising a power to a power. It's multiplying exponents, and multiplication is a commutative process. But the path that we walk down is very different depending on how we do this. So let's apply it to the example of 16 to the 3 halves, where the denominator, the index of the root, is 2, and the numerator, the power that we raise to, is equal to 3. So the two steps that we're thinking about are raising numbers to the third power and extracting the second root, or the square root. Probably the way that you did this problem was you walked this road, where first you took the square root, the second root, of 16. And what is the second root, the square root of 16 equal to? It's equal to 4. And so if we walk that road, uh, we first get to a 4. And then our job is going to be to take that 4 and raise it to the third power. So 4 times 4 times 4. And that's where you got your 64 from. So that's the road that we walk down if we saw this side of the equal sign in this equality. Right? In this expression down here, we're first extracting the root inside these parentheses, and then we're raising the result to the power that's given by the numerator. If we decided to walk the other road, we would get the same answer, but we would go through a different intermediate step in a way. If I did it that way, then the first thing I would do is I would raise 16 to the third power. So I would compute 16 times 16 times 16. I'll spare you the calculator. I think we get 2,048. Uh, no, I'm sorry, 4,096. Yeah. So we get a gigantic number if we start running down this road. And then our task after that is going to be to take the square root of 4,096. And again, I'll spare you the calculator. If you believe that we get the same answer walking both of these roads, then the square root of 4,096 had better be 64. But my point here is that that's what this expression on the right-hand side of this identity down here is telling us, right? That we can get to the a over b -th power of a number by first taking the a -th power and then by extracting the b -th root. So in this example, first taking the third power of 16 and then taking the square root of the result. And now you can see that probably the yellow marked path is generally the, the simpler one to take if you're doing the, especially if you're doing the arithmetic in your head, right? Rather than using a calculator or using a computer or some technology that generally walking this yellow road where we extract the root first is going to give me smaller numbers to work with um, than if I first try raising to a power, which is going to generally make things much bigger, and then by taking a root afterwards. But the good news is that what this commutative diagram is telling us is that we get the same answer regardless of which road that we walk.